Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Five wines in front of me. Four of them are made with grapes uh, that originated in southwest France, Bordeaux in particular. Uh, and then the fifth one, uh, really nothing much to do with the previous quartet, or so it would seem. We'll get onto that when we get when we come to wine number four. But I'm going to start on wine number one because that's the type of guy I am. Wine number one is from China, uh, Changyu uh, 2011 Cabernet Blend. Uh, the blend, uh, so it's 2011, uh, and I think it's Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, with something that they call Cabernet Gnitscht, or Gesnitscht, or something like that. Uh, it's also known as Carmenere. Probably, I don't know why they bother calling it Cabernet something when it's actually Carmenere, but then the Chileans called it Merlot for a long time. Uh, speaking of which, there is also some Merlot in the blend. Not quite sure of the, the quantities of each, but um, let's just dig in, see where we get to. Smells pale and fragrant. It feels, it smells to me like a, a slightly mature, lesser Bordeaux. Uh, not deep in colour. Uh, fruit flavours. Uh, yes, there's a bit of that black currant uh, and a bit of maturity in there. I'd have put it as older, uh, as older than a 2011 vintage, but um, uh, it smells okay. Doesn't smell like it's going to be great. There's a slight smokiness to it, um, and uh, yes, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have had that as a. a um, uh, maybe about a five-year-old lesser Bordeaux from a good year. Um, but with this smoky thing that uh, makes me think, is it, has someone put a dollop of South African wine in there? It's okay. Um, and um, it's, I think it's more of interest than, uh, than of out-and-out -out quality. Uh, I'm not sure whether Waitrose is uh, still doing it. I know they, they, they did some of it, but um, it's okay. It's it's okay. I probably have a, um, a first glass, but um, maybe look for something else for a second glass. Uh, wine number two. Uh, we are in uh, the Sud de France, uh, Pays d'Oc. It says Peche Matel Merlot, uh, made by Gilles Louvet. Give this one a whirl. It's being a bit reticent at the moment. I keep swirling and not much is coming out. I get a vague plumminess, a bit of black fruit in there, uh, but it almost feels like it uh, needs to come out of its shell. So uh, I'll do a bit more swirling and then I'll have a taste and I'll be back. It's got a bit more matière when you come to taste it. Juicy, rounded, plummy, but refreshing with it. Got a slight leafy freshness to it. Uh, not so much that you'd ever accuse it of being underripe, but just enough to make you feel that the fruit has got some perkiness and freshness and uh, a life to it, rather than just being a bit baked and, you know, those people who spend too long in the sun and have gone leathery. Uh, well, grapes, that happens to grapes too, but it hasn't happened here. Um, that's just what I want from cheap Bordeaux, uh, and to the which cheap Bordeaux seldom delivers. Uh, I like it, and it's growing on me as well. Yes, nice wine. Uh, I've got a feeling I will like it uh, more two hours from now than I do at the moment. Uh, wine number three, a uh, slightly famous one. Can you have, can you be slightly famous? I'm not sure. Uh, it's Claude Los Siete uh, from Argentina. Michel Rollins. Um, I can't remember how many vintages they've done of this now. Might be a dozen. No, maybe not a dozen. I don't know. Certainly, I'm sure they, they started about 99 or 2000. Um, the, uh, what I remember about this, it's got, it's got quite a lot of Malbec in, but, uh, uh, but it's got other things as well in there. It. It, it says, land, the noble varieties where Malbec rules. So I think it's a Malbec-dominated Bordeaux E blend. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Now, when I think of this compared with um, previous vintages I've had, this one feels to have a little bit more uh, freshness. It's still not shy with 14.5% alcohol, uh, but um, yeah, it feels it feels like the fruits there a little bit uh, less raisiny. I was talking about the raisiny character with uh, that wasn't there on the previous one, and I don't find it here. Uh, it feels like whoever's made it has got yes, they've got ripe grapes, but maybe they've not done quite as much extraction as in previous vintages. It could be a vintage variation as well, but um, yeah, it feels like someone's uh, had a lighter touch here. It smells good. Yeah, they've managed to capture the juicy, round, um, violet-scented plumminess and uh, blackberry fruit of Malbec. And then got some fresher elements in there to, uh, uh, to uh, push that upwards and say, look, you, sh you shine, we'll provide the support act and uh, we'll provide the freshness and a bit of the tannin too. And uh, it's looking really nice. It's looking really nice. And um, yeah, I do like that. Yeah, I like it more than I expected I was going to like it, so uh, bullet for them. Right, wine number four at stroke, wine number five. Why have I got these two together when one is a South African Cabernet and the other's a Madeira? Well, the secret is chocolate. 
um, both of these samples arrive uh, with a, uh, a bar of chocolate. Uh, and uh, so the first one is called Café Cabernet and the second one is uh, uh, Blandi's um, Alvada uh, five-year-old uh, Rich Madeira. Uh, so um, I'm in two minds about which I'm going to pre prefer because uh, the Café Cabernet is a bigger bottle but it arrived with a smaller bar of chocolate uh, whereas the Alvada is a smaller bottle but larger bar of chocolate. Which shall I like? And I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to taste them too, uh, first as wines and then I'm going to try them with a little bit of chocolate. So I'll dig into the Café Cabernet first. Well it's from the, it's from Paul, uh, which is quite a warm region and uh, the Cabernet there often comes up with these chocolatey coffee notes and I think that's the idea of doing this. In fact they've, uh, uh, they've, they've they're so confident of it that they've uh, actually labelled their own chocolate with uh, with Café Cabernet. Um, but as I say I'll come to it tra with, the, with the wine in a moment. Uh, but I do get these roasted notes. Uh, I get the, um, it feels like there's some, there's some fruit there in the background. Uh, I'm not sure when it says Cabernet, is it 100% Cabernet Sauvignon? It's, well it, it, the Cabernet is Cabernet Sauvignon but it almost feels like there's some uh, something leafy and tar-like that reminds me of Cabernet Franc in there, uh, giving it, um, yes, there's this ripe fruit just verging on the baked, uh, but uh, some, uh, some leafiness in there as well. I'll try the wine first. And those roasted chocolate stroke coffee flavours um, uh, persist when you, when you, you come to taste it. Uh, it's actually not quite as rich in fruit as I was expecting. Um, it's, um, it's funny, the, the uh, Claude de Lossiette was 14.5% uh, alcohol, this is a bit less, this is 13.5%. And um, it does feel like, the, it feels like there's this uh, big chocolatey character. And then the fruit is actually quite gentle. Um, I thought it was going to be a bit more ripe and uh, more stubborn than that, but it's actually, uh, delicate isn't the right word, but... Um, there is a refreshing edge to it. Now, let's open the chocolate and uh, see how we get on with the two of them. I'll open it and I'll be back directly. Nice chocolate. 70% mm. cocoa. It's got a creaminess to it, a bit of vanilla in there. Mm. Oh, it's a wine. Well, neither the chocolate nor the wine, I would say, came out um, on top of that relationship. Sometimes you have food and wine together and that one is louder than the other. Here they are, they, they both hold their own. What I would say, though, is I wouldn't say they were making beautiful music together. I would say that they were sitting there and having a polite conversation. Uh, but I think at the end of the evening, they'll be going home in separate cars. Um, it's, um, it's, it's strange because I was talking about the ripeness of the, 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 the fruit in the, uh, uh, in the wine. I almost feel that if they'd had a slightly, and I'm not usually an advocate of later picking, um, uh, but I almost feel if they'd had a little bit more sweetness of fruit in the, uh, um, in the wine, then it, would have, then it would have made a slightly better match. It's okay, I don't mind it. Uh, I would personally prefer to have the, uh, the wine with something more savoury and maybe keep the chocolate for uh, towards the end of the meal, but... Um, or even for breakfast the following day. But um, anyway, uh, that was the Café Cabernet. Uh, let's do the, the Madeira, which is the Blandis Alvada five-year-old rich Madeira. Um, give this one a whirl. Deep, nutty furniture, polish, fig, fruit, cake. I mean, Madeira is just a lovely drink. Um, good Madeira is a lovely drink. Um, it's got that n lovely mixture, mixture of ancient flavours uh, with tangy freshness. So there's this citrus, citrus peel freshness that's uh, uh, holding all these rich, juicy um, uh, Christmas cake flavours in, um, uh, yeah, in, in, in a beautiful tension. Feels like it's going to be have some sweetness to it, uh, but with this tang to um, yeah, make it all uh, make it all lively. Ah, oh, it's lovely. Um, it's got that little bit of that, sometimes when you get older Madeiras, I, I, I describe them as almost like there's a scalp itching acidity. Here, maybe not so much of that, and it's the, the rich style, so it, it has got a lot of sweetness, but as I was expecting, held in balance, uh, held in a nice tension by, um, uh, by this fresh zesty citrus acidity. Now for the chocolate, uh, which is green and blacks, again, 70%. Uh, uh, I will dig into this and I will be back soon. For me, it's one of those chocolates that's a little bit fruitier and less vanilla scented than the, um, uh, the, the, the Café Cabernet chocolate. I prefer that as a chocolate. Let's try the match. And that works really nicely. Um, I think what's happening is the sweetness in the chocolate is bringing the, the apparent sweetness level in the Madeira down a little bit. It makes it, it, makes it taste that little bit drier, but because it's got intense flavour, uh, it's, still, it's still got uh, lo lots and lots to stay for itself. It's almost like someone has put uh, a, uh, a pair of slightly loose spanks on and brought it in slightly, but it's still, still got a little bit of, um, uh, of uh, wobbly swagger about it. 
Um, the chocolate's strong enough to hold its own. The Madeira's strong enough. But in terms of, it, it's like two, two quite uh, full-on personalities having a really good time together. I have a strong feeling that uh, maybe there will be no tax at the end of the night for, uh, for, for, for those two. I think they will be making beautiful music. Hopefully I've been making beautiful music in this video. If I haven't, uh, drop a line and say, to say, Simon, I didn't think I agreed with you when you said that. Or I really agreed with you when you said that. Oh, just get in touch some way and uh, I'm sure I will take it all in good spirits. And um, I think I'm going to go away and have some chocolate now. See you soon.